All right, everyone, it's time to look at a little bit of the fallout from the uh, sort of a James Comey stuff. I know I you know, keep talking about James Comey, but it's all anyone wants to talk about anyway at the moment, let's face it. I was considering doing a, a short live stream, actually, on the topic, but then I'm like, well, it's the middle of the week. You know, not as many people will tune in. I'm going to save that for the weekend. We'll do like a wrap-up of the uh, first round of like media crap about Comey. Now, first, we've got to talk about John McCain. We've also got to at least tip our hat to Keith Elberman first, though. Uh, Keith Elberman went completely bananas last night. He tends to be a little frenetic. And here's why he's like, you know, off hook and no longer on major media platform, so to speak, and had to form his own little conglomerate. Because he clearly, he can't play nice with others. Uh, if he were on actual air and said the things that he was saying last night, he would have been fined by the FCC. And I mean a lot quicker than Colbert is likely to get fined by the FCC for his own obscene comments. Uh, essentially calling Trump, a, a, in his words, a motherfucking traitor and telling him to go to hell. Uh, so that's Keith Olbermann's <laughs> weighing in on the entire situation. Quite, uh, quite terse, uh, let's face it. As far as John McCain... He almost immediately decided to weigh in and said, oh, this is, you know, it's a problem. We need to form a, spe get a special prosecution going to look into this. This just, it just shows that we need a special prosecutor in the Russian connection stuff. Keeping in mind, of course, John McCain is a Republican. Now, in the past, people like John McCain and Lindsey Graham and all these people that are constantly like being ankle biters for Trump, um, they've said, oh, well, people within the party, they shouldn't like attack each other. And when Trump like, he would go after Rubio and they didn't like it because they wanted like Rubio to be the nominee or Ted Cruz, some other establishment candidate. Now, they would always say, oh, well, you're not supposed to attack your fellow Republicans. Now, in Hypocrisy 101, what have they been doing since November? And in fact, well before that, in many cases, John McCain is a total war hawk, a chicken hawk, I'd say. He wants people to go off and die for his oil-rich buddies in Saudi Arabia or for, uh, you know, the, the, some imperialist front in Israel or something like that. That's what John McCain represents. He doesn't even represent the United States. He represents Israel and Saudi Arabia. Those are the countries he fucking represents. That and maybe, maybe some war hawks over in some NATO country in Europe that really want to start World War III with Russia. Trump pointed it out well enough himself months ago when he said, oh, well, maybe John McCain and Lindsey Graham should stop trying to start World War III, and I can't remember the rest of it. No, no, they're always doing that. They never want to work on anything else. And it's true. Anytime John McCain says something that ends up getting quoted in a media article, anytime he talks in an interview, what's it invariably on? Is it ever about how to improve the lives of the average American? No, fuck that shit. I wonder why he lost, by the way, against Obama in the first place. No, it's bomb, bomb Iran. It's Assad is evil, we must kill him. It's invade this country and that country. He's like the dedicated, grumpy old grandpa warmonger who has forgotten that it's no longer the 1960s. That's what John McCain represents. I don't care that he was tied up in Vietnam. That doesn't mean he has good ideas. It doesn't mean he's anything other than a one-trick pony dedicated solely to the topic of wanting to fuck other people over in the world as part of a proxy war system designed to enrich himself and his friends in big business, the, the neocon sort of corporate conglomerates, the big multinational banks, and foreign entities that he happens to be friendly with. That's what John McCain does. He's made a living on it for decades now. Why the hell did the people of Arizona even restore? It would have been better if the Senate had been 50-50, he had lost, and there had been a Democratic senator from Arizona. They'd probably be easier for everyone else to work with, and they wouldn't be as insane. It's like one of those cases where you, know, you have to root for the Democrat in that race because it's John McCain who happens to be running. He's really that bad. Loses against Obama, you know, shamefacedly, is an embarrassment to his party, runs a, a campaign almost as inept, honestly, as Hillary Clinton's campaign was the last time around is a perpetual disaster for U.S. foreign policy. Constant, he supports any war that anyone wants to get involved in. The only way that he would even like Trump is if Trump announced the simultaneous invasion of Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and Syria at the same time. Oh, he'd blow his load everywhere. And that's no small task considering his extreme uh, elderly nature. John McCain's nuts. He comes out, he pretends to be all upset 
over uh, over James Comey being fired. Now, what do you notice about so many people that are upset about this? Olbermann, too. Someone pointed this out last night on Twitter. What do you notice about all those people that are pretending that this is the worst thing that ever happened within U.S. politics? They all called for James Comey's head at some point in the last six months. Whether it was because they were a Democrat and he went too hard after Hillary Clinton, or they were a Republican and he didn't end up throwing her in prison, you know, imprisoning a presidential candidate or whatever, or because of the Aberdeen crap a few days ago. Regardless of who it is, if, if you've been in politics in the last six months, at some point you've probably publicly called for Comey to be let go of. Whether it was during the end of the Obama admin, during the end stages of the election with the Clinton server crap, or whether it was once Trump was elected. At some point you've said James Comey needs to go, or at the very least he needs a really stern talking to. Now all of these people, John McCain included, Keith Olbermann included, who called for Comey's head months ago, all of a sudden are very, very, very upset about the fact that he's being fired. Well, screw you. You wanted him gone before. Why isn't this a good thing? Well, that's right. It's no longer politically expedient. You see, uh, they still I don't think these people still like Comey. They still have a stick up their ass about Comey, but they dislike Trump more. So they're willing to come out in the defense of James Comey, who can't govern his own friggin' bureau anymore. He wouldn't be capable of doing so, who faces constant uh, repercussions from even like the worst aspects of the corporate media talking about how big a dumbass he is. Some of it, yeah, honestly, undeservedly. And they're all pretending that James Comey now is like a glorious winged savior of, of the American spirit and the evil Hitlerite Trump has canned him because he was too close to impeaching Trump or something. That's la la land. That's, that's, that's false in every possible way. It doesn't make any sense. He said, you're saying an investigation into the Trump Russia stuff with some subpoenas, grand jury subpoenas, has just barely begun in any official sense. And you're expecting that, you know, he's one step from impeachment or that this somehow, if that were true, if Trump actually colluded with Russia, then this wouldn't solve his problem. It wouldn't even slow it down. It's not like the FBI ceases to function because the head of the FBI gets canned. There are other people in the chain of command there that will carry out those duties. The next in line, the deputy head of the FBI is more of a Clintonian fan with direct ties to Terry McAuliffe than Comey will ever be. Comey even pissed off the leftists. This, the dude who's in charge now never pissed off the left. The dude in charge now is an asset of the, of the mid-Atlantic left. And somehow they think that this is part of a Trump master plan to save himself because he colluded with Russia. No, I think that it's a master stroke by Trump to troll the media into having to report on a letter that says quite clearly, yeah, Comey told me several times I wasn't under investigation. Thanks for telling me that, but I have to let you go because Jeff Sessions says it's a good idea. That's what it's all about. I don't see Trump as worried at all. He immediately goes up. If, if Trump would have to be a total moron in order to, if he actually colluded with the Russians, to think that that would stop it and then immediately to go off and meet with the Russian like foreign minister or whatever he is in very quick succession, leaving behind an FBI run by someone who bitterly hates the Trumpite Republicans, as opposed to Comey, who nobody even knows what his fucking methodology and motives are, and could be, and some people thought he was on Trump's side during the election. The Democrats cried foul when that happened. Oh, he's trying to help Trump. He's trying to stop Hillary Clinton. Well, then why wouldn't you want him gone? I'd think you'd want the pawn of Terry McAuliffe to be leading the investigation. And Trump knows this. He's obviously not a moron. You look at all of his, his strategies throughout the election and into his presidency. He, he thrives on this. He loves to fool the media. He does it over and over again. It's, it's become formulaic almost. You'd think that at some point they'd wise up and stop taking the bait. But, oh boy, did they ever gobble it down this time. This is more monumental and legendary than Trump's uh, hands thing or talking about his dick size on a debate stage with Marco Rubio. It's even more legendary. He just like uh, fucked the media in the back of the head and they don't even realize it. But no, uh, John McCain comes out and talks about, oh, you need a special prosecutor, this is imperialism. Imperialism, you never complained about that when W was president. You never even complained about it really when Obama was president. You launched a half-ass campaign and then you sort of shut up and did nothing for eight years and said, oh yeah, I disagree with Obama, but we're not going to do anything about it. 
oh, Boehner's right to not do anything about it. Let's just let the government shut down for a while. Then we'll bend over backwards and appease Obama and give him 90% of what he wants because we know we can't do it. We can't possibly form a strategy against the Obama Democrats. They're too powerful. We can't handle them. Oh, Trump has actually managed to do that? Well, now he's making us look bad. Oh, and he's not starting any wars yet. Oh, shit. We got to get rid of this dude. He's a bad hombre, says John McCain. It's, it's nutty. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the left is applauding John McCain. It's just like during the election, they started applauding George W. How much more does the corporate media have to do to convince you that they don't give a fuck about Democrat versus Republican? That they're not actually left or liberal. They're just pro-corporate and pro-bank. They're, they're applauding, congratulating, and, and talking to, meeting with, having like friendly conversations with people that they claim to be Satan a few years ago. During the 2008 election, they said, John McCain will start a nuclear war. He's senile and off his rocker. He's extreme far right. He's a total Evangelo Khan idiot. He's a piece of crap. They wouldn't give him the time of day. Now all of a sudden, oh yeah, John McCain, oh, America's number one neocon. He should be president instead. He's so much better than Trump. George W. and his whole family are people who are defending Jeb Bush of all people during the election. Oh yeah, the Bushes are pretty good. Oh yeah, Herbert Walker, yeah, that failed one-term president who puked on the Japanese prime minister. He's now the standard bearer of virtue. You know, the one that fucked the economy. And he screwed everything up. He couldn't get anything right. Read my lips. No new taxes. Oh, whoops. I upped the tax rate. Herbert Walker himself, he, he sort of says to, I think it was Carolyn Kennedy or one of the Kennedy people there, says, oh, yeah, I'm not going to vote for Trump. I might vote for Hillary. Oh, yay, the Bush family. Oh, they're wonderful people. And just ignore the Iraq war. It's just like Hillary Clinton. You know why they didn't want to uh, perturb the Bushes? Because they might try to remind people, oh, yeah, Hillary voted for that war, too. It's nonsense. You can't see what these people are doing. It's almost enough to convince you there really is a deep state embedded with, uh, you know, multinational banks and globalist corporate entities and establishment political movements. Wow. What a conspiracy. You see, the problem is there's good reason to believe that that's actually true and that that's what's happening. And yet these people, they get hoodwinked. And they start thinking about Trump as though this was actually something in connection with Watergate or that John McCain wasn't, was something other than a total warmonger who spent decades and decades uh, supporting every proxy war and meeting with terrorists. It's what he does on a daily basis. He gets money from these people. How the hell do you think he has like, what is it, six, seven homes or some crazy shit like that? And you think he's got that just because of his admittedly high Senate salary? No, I don't think so. I don't think that's enough money to fund all those ventures. I think he's got some money from other places too. You should be listening. If you want a, a common sense, listen to Rand Paul. He'll call Trump out when he does something imperialistic, but he's not going to sit there all day and ramp up one side and down the other about someone who the left itself wanted gone months ago. They wanted Comey gone. Now he's gone. They pretend that they don't want him gone anymore. Make up your mind. Is Co was Comey too tough on little Hillary? Was he too mean to, to the person who you wanted to uh, crown the next president of the United States because she would break the glass ceiling, you know, while being filthy rich and part of a political dynasty, no less? Yeah, what an accomplishment for her. Oh, he was too mean to Clinton. We want him gone. Then all of a sudden, Trump does actually fire him like you wanted to begin with. Oh, no, evil imperialistic Trump. He's trying to stonewall an investigation that would still be ongoing. The FBI doesn't suddenly stop conducting its investigations because Comey's gone. That's not, that's not reality. It's a fiction. You're reading, like, myth you're reading mythological material spun by the New York Times and the Washington Post as though it's actually real. These people have pulled the wool over the eyes of millions of people. You know, they've got declining readership. Cable TV news has declining viewership. And yet there are still people who take them seriously. Why is their, view why is their viewership declining? Because no one trusts them. You shouldn't trust them. Take one look at what they're writing right now. And then take a look at the reality of the situation, how far divorced they are, and you'll, you'll understand what I mean. So Olbermann goes crazy. But that's, that's normal, honestly. McCain goes crazy. Everyone's going crazy. New York Times is going crazy. Everybody. Um, it's, it's hard to find a sane voice actually trying to analyze this, honestly. Right now, there aren't that many people that seem to have gotten it right. 
That's about all. Peace out.